Okay, time to dive into um, a bit of a new territory for me. I'm going to be talking about the Underworld movies. Um, I came across these movies because it's just another example of films that people kept bringing up and passing reference, and I kept hearing the word Underworld, Underworld, so I'm like, okay, what the heck is this about? Looked at the premise, decided it was interesting enough to give it a watch. Watched the first one, then felt intrigued to keep going, and I did, and now I've seen all four movies, and here's my thoughts on them. So the first movie, I went into it pretty cold, not really knowing what to expect, and my overall opinion was, it's a nice universe, a fairly interesting plot line, and is fairly well executed, but I'm not overall a huge fan of the movie, because... It felt slow-paced in some areas. It did feel like there were quite a lot of characters that I had to memorize, even though I recognized everyone's face and where they stood with each other. And I couldn't tell but think that too much had already happened, although that's one reason I think they made the prequel, but then again, everything that was in the prequel we could have already grasped pretty much by watching this movie only. And, uh... Given how they made that prequel, it's pretty obvious that they made it with the intention that you had already seen this movie, so... Huh. So that was a major grab that I had issues with. And... For like an elder that a Victor guy, it just seemed like... He was too brushing off of various things, just... I didn't really get the m most amount of leader sense from him, or menace. I got more menace from all the other people, vampire or werewolf alike, in this movie. And I found it interesting that this movie was trying to put the vampire closer to, like, one of the good guys, and have the werewolves be the bad guys, because I think traditionally it's the other way around. I could be wrong on that. I haven't really studied that much, uh stuff about vampire movies, and I don't really feel like it, to be honest. But I thought the action scenes were brilliantly well done, I was surprised at what humor th that was put into the movie, and I felt the ending was pretty good, and had a great way of setting up what could happen, so... I'm gonna go free personally, but for critique. Moving on to evolution, and... I'm more conflicted on this movie than with the first one, because on the one hand, I felt like it was an interesting follow-up, I was concerned for the main cast, I liked what additional details about the universe they were that was revealed, action scenes even more brilliantly well done, what humor was there, pretty good, I was, you know, really excited to see what would happen, but on the other hand, this was really close to a B movie, to be honest. This is this is what I was feeling at the time. My thoughts have kind of changed since, and ultimately, I'm even more pissed at various actions that took place from uh, the vampire people because, um, okay, um, well, again, the uh, elder of the vampires really turns out to not really care about all the other vampires that are in existence because Marcus, the moment he's revived, he kills everyone in the mansion. You know, why would he do that? I mean, like, it should be obvious that, um, Celine killed Victor, even though it's revealed in this installment and later he didn't really care about Victor, but just... I don't totally get his behavior. Why... At the very slightest opening, are you going to kill all of your fellow vampires and just release your brother, who you can't control that much anyway? And, uh, like, um, the, uh, immortal guy in this movie. Now, obviously, these are two of your sons, you know, and you do have, like, a father's devotion, but... I feel like... His actions aren't really the best, because shouldn't he have been trying to do more to stop Ma Kiss, you know? And if he knew where, uh, William Wright was the whole movie, basically, why didn't he try and do something about it? I mean, like, obviously it would have taken a lot of pressure to get William out, but since ultimately killing William proved to not be as challenging as you might have thought... Huh? 
But then again, the whole movie was trying to show that on their own, the two brothers aren't super tricky, but together, it's a lot more tricky. And it was, although I still think it was easier than it could have been, should have been. So, uh, yeah. And one other thing I want to know, what happened to that uh, blonde vampire that was constantly trying to seduce uh, Craven, you know, from the first movie? Like... Obviously, we can assume that Marcus just killed her, but, you know, she's a major character. They just end her story arc, like, that abruptly. I feel like more should have been done. Yeah. So, ultimately, on the one hand, I did like the story and the action and such, but on the other hand, characters' behavior wasn't really that great, and, uh... The ending, I just realized, you know, in many ways, it's a little too perfect? You know? I mean, like, obviously, you know, like, the vampire bites a mortal, and if they bite them correctly, the mortal doesn't die, they just become a vampire, so you could kind of assume that the blood of an immortal might have some kind of effect, but... Yeah. So I get the idea that this was more of just like a miniature rant about the movie, but I did enjoy it as I stated. But ultimately, I'm going to just go free both personal and critique. Part of me thinks that might be a little bit high, but I don't know. Now the prequel, Underworld Rise of the Lycans, well, if you've seen the first one, you can kind of predict everything that happened in this movie. Now that's not to say that I didn't enjoy it, because I liked seeing the interactions between vampires and werewolves, you know, in the more medieval-like setting. That was pretty interesting, and also I didn't really fully realize, like with the previous movie, that... You could have a race of werewolves that, you know, couldn't change into human form, you know? Although I still don't entirely get how, um, the main werewolf of Lycan guy became immortal and was able to spread his immortality. It's been a while since I saw the movie, although I'm sure the answer is fairly easily explained. But despite the fact that you could predict most of the story in this movie, I was surprised at how much of the original actors they brought back into the movie. And I did like how Victor in this movie got more menace, and with really meant out of the four movies, I honestly feel this is the best acted out of all four, which is kind of surprising to me. Um... And I'll admit, even though I knew what was going to happen in the movie, I did feel sorry for the main liking guy and that uh, vampire chick. Because, you know, you just can't deny really who you fall in love with, and you end up on opposite ends of a race barrier. That's sad, because... Well, obviously, at this point in the 21st century, many... Um, Nations and cultures are finally getting over you know, prejudice against various others, so it's just sorry to still see that happen in media, even though we should see this because it teaches us not to do it, but. Mm hmm. That pretty much summarizes my thoughts on this particular movie, so, um, like with the original, I think I'll go free personal before critique, mainly just for the, um, acting, although the action scenes were still pretty ingenious, because they had to be creative, given how this is, uh, roughly a thousand years prior, maybe not that much, doesn't matter really. And then, um, Underworld Awakening, yeah, um... I gotta admit, I was pretty nervous going into this one, because I heard that unlike the others, which appeared to have negative cultural reception, but still had their own fan base, it seemed like this one got negative reviews, but was disliked amongst the majority of the Underworld fan base. Also, you just got that vibe. So I went into it, and while I enjoyed bits of it, yeah, I'll agree that this one really kind of screwed the series up in some ways, because, um... Well, obviously, more action takes place in, um... More urbanized parts of the city, but it's not like the back alleys. It's parking garages and stuff that felt kind of out of 
place, and also, I really am not a fan of most of this movie taking place during the day, to be honest. That kind of just ruined the dark and worrying feel that the other ones had. Uh, I mean, like, I know that Celine is immune from sunlight, along with her daughter, and later, uh, that, uh, David guy? I'm blanking on his name right now. But, I just didn't totally like the transition. You know, just totally unnatural. And then the action, I again liked it, but I felt like this movie took a little too much liberty with them, you know, because now they're a lot more overblown, not really serving any purpose other than to shock you, although I was shocked, let me tell you. Because, like, when we see Mega Werewolf, I was like, oh boy, yeah. And then, like, how, um, the Mega Werewolf or Dyson from Lost Girl, yeah, 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 I'm just gonna call him Dyson from now on. If you're confused, just look up Lost Girl and Dyson, you'll figure it out, it's the same guy, but... Yeah, I'll admit, I did get some menace from Dyson's character, although I could tell he'd probably be killed off um, pretty easily, and he did put up a fight, so I was like, yeah, he didn't go out completely easy, but like all the other um, scientists slash liking people, I didn't think we would get that much menace from them, and uh, yeah, you're taking the... Uh, underworld like culture of the Lycans and now you're turning them into like scientists who probably spouted all the knowledge of both of their cultures and just kept a few of them hidden you know I just didn't like that that was a not only just a poor continuation of the universe but also ruined the uh, ending for evolution because I got the feeling that the third underworld movie proper was going to be a lot more of vampire against vampire you know because with all the elders dead suddenly the powers are for grabs and then chaos would be created and then like at the end of that movie the humans would you know become more aware and such but even making the humans aware, it just took away from the movie, you know, just not a good move. Yeah, just wasn't that great at all. Now, that's not to say that I didn't like stuff about the movie, because, like, um, Celine's daughter, that was an interesting story arc, and then... The David character, I he really liked the character from the moment I saw him. He's another confident vampire who's more aware of his situation along with his racist situation. is willing to actually fight and in many ways kind of understands Celine even though he doesn't fully was willing to sacrifice himself. And I was real sorry when uh, he died, and I totally did not get that Celine was actually saving him by cutting her wrist open and putting it into his blood until it actually happened. I was like, whoa! Now, at first I thought it was cheating, but after looking it up, you know what, I'll let that one slide, okay? Because, you know, I like the character, and it seems like they're gonna bring him back for the fifth movie, and I'm pretty happy about that. I'm hoping that he gets a good continuing story, and I'm anxious to see what he does. Oh, and how do I feel about Michael being in this movie? Uh, well, really, it's he's there just to confuse us and then just throw up a cliffhanger. I didn't really like that. I mean, like, seriously, they really should have killed him off. It would have made the movie a lot more, you know, emotional gripping and such, and it would have been better to cause Celine to nearly give up hope and then kind of have, like, the David guy bring her back along with her daughter. Yeah. So, I think that's all I had to say about, um, this particular one, because, like, if I thought Evolution was a B-movie, now nah, this one was even more of a B-movie made. The first two look a lot better in my mind, actually. <laughs> So I'm going to go 2 out of 5 for this one. You may think I'm being a little light on it, but as I said, there was good things, and it's just mainly the differences between this and previous installments that get to me. 
That being said, will I pick these movies up? Uh, maybe. I really don't know. I don't think I'd watch that much extras for these movies. I'd maybe pick them up just to pick them up, you know? Well, that went on a little longer than I thought it was going to, but I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this. And will I see the fifth one? Yeah, but I'm probably not going to see it in theater. Who knows, I might actually forget there's a fifth one coming up for a while now. <laughs>